to to all the 35 of you that are uh, now online hopefully in the next few min minutes more people will join us it's been already two weeks since our uh, first uh, webinar and uh, let me start with an introduction Uh, to this uh, second and uh, last in, uh, in the sequence uh, webinars that concerned the non-conventional uh, water resources and uh, education. So like the previous time, uh, there's a simultaneous translation in uh, English and French. So please use uh, the button of interpretation and choose the channel uh, you prefer to follow. Also, uh, for uh, reasons of publicity, the meeting is recorded to then be uh, uploaded uh, online. Uh, you can uh, leave the chat box open. Our several interactions will be done through the chat box. Also, you can uh, uh, have reactions to what is said by raising your hand. And I would like to ask you to keep your microphone off um, until you take the floor. And Could we please ask participants to turn the mics off. We were not present in uh, the previous uh, first meeting about WES. Uh, so WES in, in a snapshot, it's uh, called the Water and the Environment Support Program. It's a European program aiming at protecting the environment and improving the management of scarce water resources in the Mediterranean and capitalizes on previous uh, successful EU-funded uh, regional uh, projects. Here are the partner countries in the project uh, and its duration is 48 months. The team leader is with us, Professor Skoulos. Here is the consortium behind this project. And uh, the way that uh, this project uh, functions, it functions uh, at uh, both regional and national level. Uh, so at regional level, we have around uh, 20 regional activities, such as trainings, workshops, study visits uh, to various uh, hotspots. And of course, due to COVID, a lot of them take place electronically uh, via a webinar, just like the one we have today. Uh, there are also activities taking place at national uh, level on uh, water and uh, environment topics. National waste meetings and the platforms of collaboration take place throughout the waste project. So here is a, a slide about the results of the project, expected uh, direct results uh, that are um, collected through evaluation forms after its training and uh, there are also indirect and midterm results having to do uh, with uh, commitments that uh, participants to the West activities undertake because of this project. Now uh, to come to this uh, series of uh, meetings, we have two meetings in the previous one two weeks ago, uh, we talked about general education framework uh, that connects uh, educational activities and uh, non-conventional water resources. So we talked about uh, ESD, Education for Sustainable Development, and the whole institute approach, which are umbrella methods. Uh, in this specific uh, webinar today, uh, we will um, lo look into closer education methodologies uh, to examine uh, these non-conventional water resources. But first, we will explain what these non-conventional um, water resources are. Uh, when we finished last time, we gave you a sort of homework. So you were requested to choose an educational material, either from the ones we uh, showed or one from your country and analyze it uh, through the lenses of uh, ESD and the whole institute approach. We got about 
18 responses and uh, here are some um, results collected all together. So several of you uh, stress the importance of doing school activities, either hands-on interventions or lectures or compilation of guidebooks and teacher trainings in order to enhance um, ESD. Uh, some of you talked about other audiences like trainings to skeptical teachers who are not yet convinced about the value of ESD, to parents, to farmers, another important target group, and uh, women and youth, uh, which is an important group on, on which we also focus our webinar today. <coughs> Some of you uh, mentioned the uh, value of uh, eco clubs, either uh, functioning with, within the school in the formal system or uh, outside of, you know, of the school in the non-formal uh, system. Uh, one of two of you uh, talked about the value of peer pressure. So uh, we're working at uh, multiple levels. And once we convince our target audience, our students or teachers, uh, you believe uh, on the pressure that these uh, committed um, audiences have on uh, their own environments. Um, there was a, a reply uh, from the Media and Awareness Unit that um, is functioning within a Ministry of Environment, Environment and Water, showing a lot of communication activities that are important. Uh, one of you mentioned uh, the National Plan of EE and ESD that includes basic components such as curriculum, pedagogic tools, and teacher trainings. Uh, one or two of you talked about uh, infrastructures. So you mentioned uh, water calculators already existing in public buildings or studies that uh, have taken place in universities or in schools in order to know uh, exactly how much water is uh, consumed in these buildings and um, uh, maintenance uh, measures that uh, should be taken uh, to reduce the water consumption further. Uh, one of you uh, mentioned also the power, the uh, topic of uh, using wastewater for uh, irrigation. And uh, some web pages that you proposed are here. So coming uh, to today's agenda, after this uh, welcome and housekeeping, uh, we will move to the session, the first session, which will be done in plenary. So we will talk about uh, what are the non-conventional uh, water resources and how these um, non-conventional water resources are approached through the project uh, of, of ours uh, taking place for uh, a decade or so. Uh, then we will have a break, a short break. And in the second session, we will uh, split in three groups. Already some of you have chosen uh, the group you want to um, follow. I need to clarify that there will be no translation in these groups. So the first group has to do with designing diagrams and concept maps for water. It is closely linked to what we explained in session A, and it will be done in English. Uh, the second group explores how we achieve a water efficient institution, and also uh, it will be done in English. And the third group uh, talks about uh, women and youth in water management and education, and it will be in French. So uh, during the break, you can uh, select uh, the group you will follow. Then after one hour, we come back to plenary and uh, the three groups report back shortly uh, about what happened during this one hour in their groups, and we close the meeting. So I will stop share and give the floor immediately to Professor Skoulos to comment or start with the first session. Thank you very much, Hiro, and uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, let me uh, share a few uh, ideas and a few slides with you uh, as it was uh, already uh, mentioned uh, today will focus on the non-conventional water resources because this is a very uh, critical, crucial uh, part of uh, water management 
but also an area where we need to raise the awareness and educate because it is an in inverted commas a rather new water resource and i will make it very clear um, in a minute actually in the mediterranean uh, we had always a, a, an issue with water it's a water scarce area but uh, recently we have recently in the last decades we have uh, two additional challenges. The big challenge of climate change and also followed by a very rapid population growth, particularly in some countries of the east, eastern coast and southern coast, considerable increase. So when we are talking about available water, it is not only the availability of water, but also the per, per capita available water so um, we need to address these issues uh, and uh, it is very difficult it's very difficult when you see the this map you see where the dark colors you see areas where in fact we have more demands uh, than the available water. And uh, uh, we use uh, actually um, fossil water, in many cases, water from uh, uh, water bodies that uh, are not um, recharged with, uh, with rain, or we need to add uh, new water in inverted commas from desalination, and uh, other non-conventional water resources, and we'll come to that. Uh, so this is not a model where you see the red and orange are areas where we had uh, significantly drier winters in the last decade, and the same phenomenon uh, continues. That means that we have a considerable disruption of the natural uh, water cycle and the seasonality of this cycle. This doesn't mean that the overall water we receive in these countries is much less, but is not in the seasons we knew. And uh, also sometimes uh, it, the whole water comes in short periods resulting in floods where in other area, periods we have droughts and floods become more and more and more frequent. And here are also the number of human losses we have in uh, the last, uh, let's say, half uh, of the 20th century, at the beginning of this. So um, this, why I'm saying that, because these are all important things for the public and for students and for everybody to understand in depth and see actually what are the solutions uh, in addressing these challenges. And in fact, apart from the absolutely necessary mitigation uh, measures, addressing decarbonization of energy and uh, all what economy in energy and all the rest, I mean, uh, to address the climate change issue. The water issue has, and the non-conventional water resources issue, addresses water issues per se, water scarcity per se, but also the needed adaptation to climate change. And uh, in fact, two are the, um, the wider, if you wish, family of solutions, families of solutions. The one is economy, wiser use of water, uh, water demand management, uh, reduction of the non-revenue water, the water that uh, is lost, is not accounted, is not paid. All this is one group. And the other group is to increase actually the water availability, by using the only 
increasing resource we have of water, which is the water we use. So the gray water and waste water. On this and uh, on rain water and uh, the storm water are the non-conventional water resources. So I come to that. Uh, actually, um, I have prepared also a background material for you, for those of you who wish to go a little bit deeper there and understand uh, the methodologies and all these kind of things, because in, uh, in this uh, workshop, we focus on the educational part, not so much on the scientific and technological part, but this is absolutely necessary for everybody to understand deeper. And if you are an educator or you address educators, it's good that you spend some time to understand a little bit better the scientific and technological background. So in this presentation, we'll discuss a little about the non-conventional water resources. I'm going to say a few words, and then uh, Vicky is going to, uh, to guide you through. Uh, we will uh, 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 discuss uh, the learning activities and tools developed uh, by the uh, MEDIS uh, program of uh, MIO. Uh, uh, the uh, micro is open and um, uh, the non-conventional water resources in the Mediterranean program and also we'll elaborate on how we can make our audiences aware and uh, this is what uh, uh, what uh, uh, Iro mentioned about the second part in the second part today will uh, one of the workshops, the, uh, the one of the uh, groups will focus uh, also on the um, gendering issue, the, the role of women and youth, um, taking also uh, some examples. It is very important for everybody to try and understand a little bit better how in all kind of um, teachings, we can introduce elements that um, reflect on this issue, which is very important. And this is going to be uh, actually um, led by uh, Angela. So, so um, this is um, the uh, DG, uh, SDG 6. Uh, which asks for the international cooperation and capacity building uh, to support particularly developing countries in water and sanitation, and uh, also including water harvesting, desalination, and the wastewater treatment. So all what is in the second part of this sentence refers to actually non-conventional water resources. Um, this uh, slide uh, has a lot of information, but um, uh, what is important is that this has been prepared by UNESCO uh, as um, um, key issues, uh, key educational topics that uh, uh, are uh, important to be developed in uh, the different um, uh, programs. So um, I don't know why, uh, yeah, I can't see here, um, the, uh, this part, the water and sanitation related activities, um, and uh, perhaps, yes, here it is. Uh, this particular um, uh, uh, part of the suggested uh, educational topics, uh, in one or another way, refer to the uh, non-conventional water resources. We are talking about water harvesting from, from rain, water, uh, wastewater treatment, recycling and reuse uh, of water, uh, groundwater recharge, integrate. All these are within the integrated water resources management. 
And uh, uh, I would like to, uh, to focus in uh, just in few words in the, uh, these uh, four or five uh, categories of uh, non-conventional water resource. The, the first one uh, is very old, and, but still we call it non-conventional in the sense that uh, in, the, uh, in the first uh, part of the, or the second part of the 20th century, we have neglected a little bit this. So rainwater harvesting is directly collecting rain while stormwater management is collecting and treating the runoff when uh, you have actually this uh, storm water and in, you can obtain with its management two things. First, you secure additional water resources while avoiding or reducing the risk from flooding. So um, this water, depending on the level of treatment, can provide even potable water, but definitely as you have it even untreated, you can use it obviously for irrigation, for a number of um, uh, household uses such as uh, to toilet flushing or car washing or um, uh, uh, municipal water for, uh, for um, washing streets or for, um, for watering greens and parks and whatever. So this uh, still uh, has a tremendous potential to do that um, and adapt uh, at all levels uh, the systems um, uh, collecting this storm water and uh, using it uh, during summer months or when you don't have enough water. The gray water recycling uh, is another important issue. Gray, gray water is uh, a kind, a part of wastewater. Uh, it is the one coming from showers, baths, um, not toilets, not uh, kitchen. So um, it is uh, usually, and in many countries, collected uh, in decentralized systems. So even at the household level and uh, provides water for, um, for um, toilet, for um, irrigation, uh, for uh, gardens, and so on and so forth. Wastewater recycling can be both at decentralized and even centralized level. And uh, uh, when properly done, it can actually uh, support many, many, many uh, activities, particularly irrigation. And of course, desalination, uh, and many countries uh, rely on that, uh, already, uh, and island countries like uh, Malta or uh, Cyprus or Israel or others uh, who have developed a lot of uh, new technologies. And um, uh, recently also the energy demand for desalination uh, is uh, decreasing. So uh, of course, the energy issue is an important problem. So, uh, we try to couple it with uh, non-conventional <laughs> or with, uh, with renewable energies there. So these are more or less uh, the major uh, non-conventional water resources. We need to properly understand their potential. Um, in some countries, we had in the past uh, almost a taboo in using this water. Uh, there is a change in mentality already, and we need to understand that this is a very important resource. Um, we need to prepare the society uh, better for using and appreciating the potential of these resources. 
uh, and still uh, we avoid, of course, to use these resources, although in other parts of the world they are using some of these resources also for potable water. But at least in, uh, in the Mediterranean, we have already an understanding that we can use them for many, many other uh, resources. So thank you here. I see already a, a hand uh, by Uri uh, from the Water Authority of Israel uh, asking perhaps uh, for the floor. Yes, uh, please. Um... Uh, I was missing one of the main points uh, on uh, is as a fifth uh, point of uh, the four that you related to are hundred percent right, but I'm missing uh, the whole uh, thing of uh, fixing uh, and uh, preventing uh, leaks and water losses, uh, conservation, education campaigns. That's really the the base for for uh, for a change or sure. for uh, uh, using water rightly. No, no, I mentioned that at the beginning. We, I didn't elaborate because we have said that in uh, different uh, uh, audiences before. But anyhow, thank you very much. This is, I mean, the water we don't lose is the best, uh, is the best way we gain. And uh, you are absolutely right. We still have uh, uh, non revenue water, we call it non-revenue, but it is not only non-revenue, it is water we lose in the networks and even at households. So it is very important. And uh, I think this is going to be also discussed in uh, some of the uh, um, workshops this uh, afternoon. Thank you very much for that. So um, I give back, uh, 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 um, Iro, uh, you may also show the background document we have. Uh, I think it is uh, important to, to use this background document, uh, which uh, uh, provides uh, the different, you can see uh, the slides, there are about 50 slides or whatever there, um, giving the methods, explaining a little bit more about each one of them, and uh, giving also the, the major uh, systems that you can use. So uh, the, the, this material is pr provided for you, uh, and we don't have the time now to get into that. Uh, many yes. of you might know for sure those working with water authorities, uh, but also those working with uh, ministries of education uh, and uh, also non-formal education, all the rest, uh, could uh, use uh, a lot of these uh, examples uh, in enriching uh, their uh, teaching. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, we move uh, to the next. There is one uh, more hand, I see, Professor Skoulos. Uh, okay. Who uh, here? Excuse me. Yes. Uh, I have a question only. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we want to use uh, non-conventional uh, water. It's okay, but uh, when we uh, we talk about uh, uh, wastewater and reuse. Uh, you talk about uh, gray water and uh, and uh, the, the reuse. When you talk about uh, this uh, kind of water, you didn't mention that this uh, should be within the when we use it, it should be within the guidelines and regulations, because uh, this water it, it uh, contains uh, pathogens, we are uh, talking bacteria about fully... and viruses, which is. Yeah harmful for the public. So no, we no, want I'm to not use non-conventional, but- untreated. Excuse me. Ah. Uh, I'm talking about properly, properly treated and safe yes. water. We okay. are not talking we about uh, using uh, ah. waste. It is uh, okay. unacceptable. Of course, ah. it is absolutely we... clear that we are talking we about properly treated water. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Absolutely. No. 
Uh, and uh, we, uh, and even there is a question, and this is why we say still uh, we don't pro uh, propose it for uh, potable water or for cooking, uh, yeah. even if it is proper, because we might have some uh, micro pollutants there that still we yes. don't. Yes. Still, we are not sure and safe uh, on that. So we are talking okay. about uh, water that is of similar quality with the natural waters. Because as you okay. know, we have discharges of waste or runoff, agricultural waste into the okay. na natural systems, rivers, <laughs> lakes. And then we use this water uh, for uh, for all purposes. So this water okay. is not uh, something different. We are talking about very uh, well treated water. Also, if, even even when we use the treated water uh, within uh, certain technologies, we would choose we should choose the right technology for it to give us the right reuse. Even yes. technologies are different. Uh, different they have different efficiency in removing the pathogens. We but this are is not a very getting... important. Uh, this is very important. It is, to and we insist on to... that. Yeah. But we should not stop this because we need water. So we need, yes, we need it. the proper proper technologies, uh -huh. proper technologies for yes. that. We should not. Uh, uh, we, we are not uh, actually uh, discussing this. This is out of question that it should be proper. If it is okay. not properly treated, we don't use it. So this is clear. There is another uh, question, uh, Hasna. Bonjour. Good morning, everyone. Very happy to see you again here. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Professor Skoulos. And I would like to ask something uh, important. The system of desalination of um, seawater in cases in coastal areas which are very arid, very uh, dry. Can you please comment on that? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, we know that uh, desalination now is uh, providing a very good quality water, even potable water. And uh, we have um, uh, also reduced the cost in comparison with what we had, let's say, 20 years ago. Um, the issue today is that um, um, desalination is energy intensive. To a certain extent, we move the problem from water scarcity to contributing with emissions to climate change. But uh, there is a, a, an effort to uh, use uh, uh, renewable energies. So we move uh, towards a, a better solution. There are side problems with desalination, particularly with discharge of the brine. If this is done, you know, in massive uh, way in particular areas, there is no solution that has no side effects. All solutions have, to a certain extent, uh, yes, you need to compromise something. But it is a, a very important solution at the moment. And as I said, the majority, I mean, more than 50% of the water, let's say, in Malta, and in, in, in considerable part of, of, the, uh, of the water in other countries, uh, comes from desalination already. So we can say that it is one of the non-conventional water resources, we need to have the whole menu in order to address the, the problems. In some countries, even in your country, there is a discussion even to use it for some kind of 
uh, of, of irrigations, of agriculture, in some cases extreme. At the moment, uh, we don't use it yet, at least uh, not massively for that. But uh, it is one of the, of the areas where a lot of uh, improvements, uh, a, lot of, a lot of research is ongoing also. I, I don't want to take two more, ma, more, well, one more question, yes, from uh, Mr. Tamer. Zawadi. You are muted. Oui. Merci. Bonjour tout le monde. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I have a comment, if you allow me. In Tunisia right now, we are uh, uh, concluding uh, a master plan for the enhancement of uh, uh, wastewater in the, uh, the various sectors. I believe it's going to be a very interesting uh, initiative. So, um, oh, in this webinar, we'd like to see various alternatives for each sector, for each water consumer. For instance, uh, we know that uh, the uh, industry is not the same as uh, the agricultural sector, which is not the same as the tourist sector. So we do have uh, uh, the uh, consumers and the producers of uh, wastewater. So it would be important to see how we can manage that water, how we can adopt the best possible technologies in order to improve the quality of this uh, wastewater and ensure that uh, reuse uh, will cover the needs of several uh, sectors. So uh, the ideal would be to have a specific uh, technique targeting a specific sector. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, uh, however, I'm going to a little bit disappoint you here because uh, this particular session is for education. Uh, we have uh, uh, specific sessions. We had already under West, and we have more sessions on uh, technologies and uh, in dealing with different sectors. Uh, so perhaps uh, you may be informed uh, on what uh, has been said already because it is available in the uh, West page, but also what is coming. So uh, all what you asked for is going to be or has been uh, presented by Wes, and there will be more webinars on that. But this particular one addresses educators, formal and non-formal, and uh, we cannot get into this level of uh, detail. Uh, I understand that it's very important for even for awareness raising of the specific target groups in specific uh, sectors, uh, industry, uh, uh, agriculture, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, we may uh, design another webinar for that. Today, we have to uh, give the emphasis to educators of uh, formal education in schools so that they and informal uh, general public in, in a way that this thing that in the mind of many people is a purely technical issue becomes understood by the wider community and address this within the overall new water culture that is necessary. We need to have a new water culture, the entire society. So the today's uh, uh, addressing, today's uh, design uh, uh, takes into account this, uh, the, the needs of the, of, the, of the bulk of the society uh, at schools and the general public, not 
the specific target groups. But thank you very much for that. We'll take it into account for the, uh, for the additional trainings. Thank you very much indeed. So I, uh, I, I go back, uh, Iro, you uh, continue, to, you and- uh, To pass the floor to Vicky, actually. And Vicky, yes. Yes, to continue with uh, explaining NCWRs through an educational perspective, as you explained. Yes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Let me share my screen. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Uh, so I'm going to start with an icebreaker that we use, an icebreaking activity that we usually use with learners of all ages in order for them to introduce, to, turn, to introduce them actually to NCWRs after having talked a little bit about them as Professor Skoulos uh, did uh, for you. So uh, I'm going to show you some images very quickly, some pictures, and I'm kindly asking you to write in the chat uh, whether our uh, rainwater harvesting work, uh, so you can write the rain, um, or a gray, gray water recycling work, or a wastewater treatment plant and system or a desalination system. So let's start with the first two images coming from islands of Greece. This is actually coming from a kindergarten. It is a traditional one, whether uh, uh, that one with the metal um, tank, okay, I revealed it, uh, is a, a a, a modern, let's say, one. And uh, yes, of course, you are very right. We are talking about rainwater harvesting works. And we move on with the next one, also coming from a Greek island in Polegandros, uh, a bigger one than the, pre the previous. Uh, and Okay, I have a, one about desalination here and two about rainwater. Actually, it is again a rainwater harvesting uh, work, well done. But now we're talking about stormwater management and stormwater, the run of collection of stormwater. So this is a municipal uh, work, while the previous ones were rainwater harvesting uh, at the household level. Uh, this comes from Cyprus. Uh, uh, this work has been installed in a football course in Cyprus. So can you guess? Can you guess what uh, will that be? Gray. I see one gray, one desal, desalination. Any other ideas? Gray again. Rain, gray, gray, gray. You are again right. We're talking about the reuse of treated gray water that comes from the showers of the athletes and we properly collect it, reuse it, uh, treat it and reuse it in order to water the lawn of the course. Uh, I think this is pretty much obvious for most of you. Yes, 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 it is indeed a black water, wastewater treatment plant. Um, If I'm not wrong, uh, this, these pictures are from Greece and Malta. And the uh, last but not least, this is the interior of the, let's see your replies in the chat. Oh, exactly, of a desalination uh, plant. Thank you very much for your feedback. Okay, let's move on quickly. One more poll now for you. <clears throat> so the next question, and I'm kindly asking Magda to share it with you. Uh, thank you very much, Magda. Is which MTWR method would you choose as a topic, as your priority topic in order to design an educational or awareness raising project? You have a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, I give you 10 more seconds. Oh, 
Okay, uh, we have enough answers already. I will end the poll and share with you the results. I uh, hope that you can see the, uh, the replies, your replies. It seems that uh, the majority um, uh, prioritizes or would like now to work uh, on rainwater harvesting, uh, actually. Uh, method and the uh, gray water recycling comes next, wastewater uh, treatment recycling, then and desalination last. Okay, thank you very much again for your participation. And uh, we will move on now uh, with uh, the educational activities that we have developed uh, in the so-called program that also I presented to you uh, in our last webinar, the NCWR program in the Mediterranean. Um, so my, uh, my presentation will focus on explaining you how we approach pedagogically uh, the NCWRs uh, uh, in uh, primary schools and secondary schools in teachers trainings and in, uh, and in public events for uh, public awareness raising. Uh, as we have explained, uh, the Mediterranean Information Office and MEDIS Network was responsible for the educational component of the whole program. Uh, you have seen our outcomes and results in the previous uh, presentation. This is a map uh, depicting um, the islands that uh, have been uh, uh, participated in, in the project, in the, uh, uh, in the educational activities actually of the project. And uh, I will skip this question in order to share with you a uh, very summarized the reflection that we got from the learners, from the learners th themselves through the questionnaires and the evaluation processes, uh, formal and informal that we had during the project. So they actually showed great uh, interest and they joined the hands-on activities that I'm going to share with you as well. Uh, they declared that an increase in their knowledge about water cycling and urban water cycle, about the techniques of rainwater harvesting, about cisterns, gray water. Um, it seems that the younger pupils showed a preference on the general topic of the water cycle, while the older students Students seem to be more impressed uh, with the new technologies uh, like uh, grey water uh, recycling and uh, um, wastewater treatment, new technologies uh, uh, about these NCWRs. Uh, it seems that uh, many uh, of the learners uh, um, living in uh, rural and uh, uh, island uh, areas uh, were familiar, uh, and this is not surprising uh, with the rainwater harvesting, um, while the majority didn't know about the terms, the terminology on great water and black water, but when we explained them, uh, uh, they were um, pretty much uh, understood. Uh, and uh, last but not least, the majority at the end of the program declared that uh, is willing, is committing to go with a, a more responsible uh, behavior towards water, towards everyday water use, uh, and actually is uh, in favor of uh, NCWRs. So, uh, very summarized, our methodology when we design an educational activity, and particularly uh, during the NCWR program, is to start by grabbing the learners or our audience's attention uh, through various types of ice breaking and uh, brainstorming activities. Uh, a second key element is to get to know about their own ideas and their own initial knowledge, either are misconceptions or are right, and uh, to start building on them. Uh, we try to connect um, their everyday life, their experiences, their background uh, with uh, the topic that we introduce in the program. Uh, we design by nature um, hands-on and uh, interactive uh, activities as much as we can. So we design, uh, develop the games, uh, experiments, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
um, for sure, uh, our educational programs include um, a great deal of, of getting feedback and reflection by the from the team, from the group, in order to check their initial ideas, in order to discuss about the experience they had during the program, in order to uh, discuss also the new knowledge gain. And overall, uh, we try to uh, follow a, a transformative and transformative approach in terms of uh, uh, discussing about our own uh, behaviors and responsibilities and lifestyles and um, uh, uh, not by criticizing them uh, for sure, but we discuss uh, if we are feeling now that we need uh, we need to adapt uh, something or uh, we need to change something to the experience than possible and everybody is free to express and um, um, suggest and uh, even uh, commit to a new kind of uh, activity or everyday uh, behavior and uh, things like that or even a, a school action or a, a community uh, action actually. Uh, so uh, I'm going to share with you in the um, following 20 minutes or so uh, the particular hands-on activities about the rainwater harvesting, the wastewater treatment, uh, desalination and grey water. I have also included some general ones about water that we um, also integrated in the program because uh, it was quite important to be there like the water cycle and the urban water cycle or uh, uh, discussing about the old systems, the water and rainwater harvesting systems uh, and what are their connections with our today's uh, t technology and life. So starting, by, uh, starting with uh, the rainwater harvesting system, uh, this is a uh, uh, our key activity, educational activity. We have uh, designed a big diagram of a basic rainwater harvest, harvesting system, actually a 2D diagram, diagram of a system in a building uh, at a building level. Uh, we hand out cards uh, with the parts of the rainwater harvesting system to small groups of learners or to pairs. So it's a group that uh, discusses uh, the term that has the part of the system and uh, tries to see uh, where it fits on the diagram. Group by group, we place all the elements correctly. correctly. We discuss them uh, um, in plenary. And we also discuss uh, um, what uh, such a system needs in order to be maintained. This is the 2D uh, diagram model of the rainwater harvesting system that we used in uh, during our activities in uh, Greece. So we tried to incorporate two kinds of buildings, either a traditional one with roof or another a, mo a, a modern, let's say one with a terrace. And uh, these are the, um, the cards with the various parts of the system. So uh, I'm kindly inviting you to do all together this uh, learning activity using the mural, the mural uh, online tool. I see that the mic is open. So uh, please visit uh, this link. This is the link to the mural activity that I have prepared for you. You can enter as a visitor, no need to register or log in. Uh, there you will see our diagram on rainwater harvesting. You can zoom in and zoom out. And uh, please um, drag and drop the parts that are already there waiting for you uh, to the right spots. You can also add any comments you may have or any missing part. Um, we have uh, some 10 minutes for this activity. I will stop share this presentation now. Uh, I'm going to share with you once again uh, the bit.ly. Uh, I see that, Iro, thank you very much. You have already shared the, the link to our mural activity. Uh, and I will actually share now this uh, mural wall. 
as you can see, I enter as a visitor, no need to uh, log in. And some of you are already inside trying to uh, assemble, let's say, this 2D model. Okay. So you have put already, let's see, I uh, see the pipe, the filter, the tank. Okay, what is missing? Please try not to remove the background, the background image, because you need to drag and drop again uh, the cards with the parts, with the elements of the system. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of movement on the diagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Let's see what is missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that it needs some uh, time in order to um, get used to and get familiarized with the tool. It's not so difficult. Um, it all has to do with the drag and drop thing. Or if you want to add something in the diagram in on the wall, you just double click and you add your own note. Okay, I see that we have lost the catchment surface. Someone is rescuing it. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I will leave this open so that you can um, play with the diagram during the break, maybe, or afterwards, but uh, we really do need to go back to our presentation. And uh, let's discuss a little bit now the diagram as it is. I see the catchment surface uh, on the roof, and I do agree because uh, this is the area, this is the surface where we collect uh, the rainwater. Uh, I see the drainage pipe here and here, so you can put it, let's say, uh, on that spot in order to cover both. This is the main pipe, the main gutter that collects the uh, rainwater from uh, the roof or uh, the terrace. All right, uh, what else? Let's see. There is a pipe here, of course. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, very correctly, you have put the filter there. I agree. The tank, that is the heart, let's say, of uh, such a system. Of course, a tank that can be a, met a metal one or a plastic one, usually. Um, uh, the plastic ones uh, are used uh, in buildings today. Um, uh, this very, very little uh, pipe siphon is the overflow siphon. I do agree. We use it in order to avoid the overflows and in order to have, uh, let's say, an open and ended um, spot uh, on our system. Uh, and uh, facilitate aeration as well. Of course, we do have uh, included the pump uh, in the tank in order to um, uh, to uh, in order for the collected water uh, in the uh, tank to be used then uh, either outdoors or indoors. And uh, that's it. Uh, that is uh, the activity about about the rainwater. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will um, we will continue with the presentation. Uh, 
I hope you can see it all. And uh, so this is how it looks like when the students, the learners uh, have uh, completed the whole exercise. And this is another model of a rainwater system that we have developed, this time 3D, a more fun one, uh, with actual objects that uh, represent the rainwater uh, system, again, uh, at a building level. So uh, the group is asked to assemble, actually, the 3D model, and uh, step by step, uh, um, they, of course, they use a given photograph uh, in order to assemble uh, the apparatus, the model. And we discuss about the, the types of all elements and the materials used, uh, uh, its uh, time, how do we maintain such a system, what are the uses of uh, the treated uh, harvested rainwater. We talk about toilet flushing, uh, irrigation, outdoor washings or we talk about um, the uses at community level, level um, such as irrigate the urban greenery, mitigate flooding, uh, so on and so forth. Here you can see the, um, uh, the group, one of the groups in Malta um, with uh, the 3D model assembling the 3D model. Mm -hmm. And these are actual pictures of uh, the technical works uh, within the program, NCWR in the Mediterranean. Uh, let me say- Kulos, Would you like to add something? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I just wanted to remind uh, uh, all our uh, friends here that um, what you see here are uh, specific uh, works that have been used, installed by um, the Global Water Partnership and Mediterranean Information Office, many of them next to schools Chip, and uh... local small communities. And uh, during the construction of these uh, works, uh, we involved uh, schools to visit and see how these are constructed. So uh, whenever you have this opportunity uh, in your countries uh, to take schools uh, in during the construction of this kind of, of works, it is very useful and very, very uh, effective. This is uh, just what I wanted to, to mention. And we try to have uh, several of the smaller scale ones next to schools or in schools. And this is uh, perhaps the most uh, impressive and uh, effective way uh, to involve uh, also uh, students and their families in the understanding of uh, the importance of this and uh, how uh, close we are in uh, in having them not as a remote let's say technique but something close to them thank you indeed, indeed. thank you very much professor so this this is all about uh, the rainwater harvesting very quickly we move on with another set of hands-on activities uh, developed about the wastewater treatment uh, recycling. Um, so I'm going to share with you uh, the um, a magnetic board actually that we developed uh, a 3D1 magnetic board depicting again the system of wastewater treatment. This was, this was actually a, a tailor-made model um, following uh, the methodology and the approach of wastewater treatment uh, system in Malta. Uh, so apart from the diagram that uh, this time uh, was uh, developed in, in a magnetic on a magnetic board, uh, we also developed and uh, created uh, 3D miniatures representing uh, the, let's say, parts, uh, the various parts of the system. Uh, together with the labels explaining uh, the process or the term, uh, it's time. So uh, again, in this activity, we um, introduce the learners to the diagram, to the magnetic board. We share with them the objects and the cards with the terms and the processes. 
uh, we discuss any unknown terms, uh, uh, any doubts, any misconceptions again about wastewater treatment, and we uh, identify again step by step where its piece uh, goes and the right spots. Um, this is a, a picture of the um, diagram that we developed about wastewater recycling. Uh, in Malta, it is very specific and very tailor-made uh, on the case. And um, these are some photographs uh, of the diagram uh, when we work with it uh, on it uh, with uh, in a teacher's training before introducing the activity uh, with the learners. Uh, you can see the small objects and the cards that are explaining the whole system. Um, of course, again, uh, we discuss uh, the uses of the um, recycled um, and treated wastewater, and we uh, emphasize that depending on the level and depending on the degree of the treatment and on the very specific quality standards that uh, uh, this new water, this reclaimed water, um, applies and um, we are very uh, uh, careful um, uh, in this part. So we explain them that um, uh, this uh, reclaimed water, they call it new water in Malta actually, it can be used, can be used in watering uh, golf courses, let's say parks, uh, can be used even in factories for cooling purposes in toilet flushing and so, so forth. Sorry, Vicky, yeah. apologies. I see Professor Skoulos with the model and I see a hand uh, raising, uh, probably with a question about wastewater. Of course, of course. I'm sorry for that. Um, so um, I'm stopping. Do you want me to stop also sharing? Well, That's Professor I just Skoulos wanted to share something? Okay, I need to stop share then. Okay. Uh, uh, can you see the models we can use? Uh, with uh, these are the this, 3D. These are 3D. Yeah, yes, actually, the, models. The, all the small, uh, uh, you know, uh, like and this is uh, very also amusing for children to to see the different parts and play because uh, there is also the possibility to see the water in, inside and have this. So there are similar models. I can show you other ones, but this is, these are the, this is the one I, I just wanted to. It, they are not expensive. I mean, you can uh, some students can do that, but also you can have some uh, uh, support from uh, uh, experts on that. Thank you very much. Is, These are actually about rainwater uh, harvesting, rainwater uh, harvesting one, systems. You can see also the whole system. And uh, similar types of models are very useful for educational purposes. OK. Okay, uh, I, I will try to move on very quickly and maybe then answer, one, one, answer one questions. There's one uh, question, maybe it's specific to this water. Uh, yes, please, Shoshi. Yes, I just want to ask you if you can mention uh, each, uh, which age are you talking about? When mention you, it. Uh, uh, saying yes. about the activities, it will be very useful for us to know. Thank you for that question, Shoshi. Uh, usually we work with uh, learners from uh, eight to nine years old up to 15. However, the same programs, the same hands-on activity more or less have been adapted, they need adaptation of course, to younger children and also to um, uh, uh, to older students, even at Lyceum. So what I'm showing now to you, what I'm sharing with you are the key activities that have been applied um, 
with, let's say, from 9, 10 years old up to 13. This is the vast majority. However, many, many times have been adapted, as I said, also to younger and older students. And the level of the explanation and of the interpretation, it's time, the depth that we go during our discussion depends, of course, every time. It needs adaptation. Okay. Uh, if we don't have any other question, we will try to continue uh, with the next um, hands-on activities. The next one is about the desalination system, uh, and it has been applied. Uh, the, this is an application from the Cyprus uh, program. Uh, we again uh, uh, introduce learners uh, with uh, a rather, this time, uh, generic and simplified model of the desalination system. Uh, so we introduce them to the whole process and uh, hand out again uh, cards with the terms of the system to persons, small groups, and we try to identify the various uh, steps. Uh, this is a diagram, uh, but uh, we will not do the activity. It was planned to be interactive and play the activity with you. I will just uh, share with you the diagram and the cards. As you can see, it's rather generic, uh, depicting uh, the various steps of uh, desalination systems. However, during the um, discussion and the inter interpretation of its uh, uh, step, uh, we have a chance with the group to analyze and explain uh, all the um, steps taken during the treatment of uh, marine and brackish water uh, to become uh, 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 almost, uh, let's say, fresh water and um, uh, be used for potable uses as well. Um, of course, we discuss about the energy topic, the energy issue, and uh, what are the alternatives uh, for um, the desalination system, what are the challenges and the opportunities to overcome uh, the energy cost. Um, And uh, we have also developed hands-on activities on grey water. And this is something, um, this is an activity that uh, usually students are very, very interested uh, to know, very curious to know about it because it's not fresh water, it's not black water. Uh, what is a grey water um, uh, uh, at all? So um, before I introduce them to the diagram again of um, Grey water system uh, in a building. We play a game um, with them, um, sharing with them uh, large photos uh, depicting, showing everyday, everyday water uses, everyday life uh, water uses, and uh, uh, let, letting them guess whether this uh, waste water, let's say, uh, is uh, grey water or no. So we let them uh, brainstorm uh, a little bit uh, and uh, we give them a, sh uh, a picture showing um, the wastewater after washing our hands, let's say the school taps uh, or the, uh, the wastewater coming from the dishwasher or the laundry machine or the after a shower or even the water uh, uh, of a swimming pool or, or from car washing and so on and so forth. There are numerous uh, examples. And uh, they need to reply by yes or no if their uh, image, uh, if the image is a grey water resource. Uh, we discuss and make uh, clear um, at the end what grey water is, uh, uh, stressing that it is the wastewater other than black water, of course, that comes from the bathtubs, uh, the wash hand, uh, the washing hands um, basins, uh, uh, the showers, and the laundry ma machine. Um, many times uh, they ask, they keep asking uh, why the um, um, wastewater coming from the kitchen sink or the um, dishwasher isn't it a grey water? And of course, we explain them that it is a grey water. It is not black water, but uh, it's um, 
treatment process it's uh, more complex uh, and uh, costly than the treating process uh, for the wastewater coming from the bathtub or the laundry. So we again uh, work with um, a 2D model of the gray water system, analyzing its parts step by step. This is the diagram that we use, uh, I think in all countries, it has been used uh, this activity in Malta, Cyprus, and uh, Greece, uh, Greece as well. So we explained that uh, a grey water uh, a system needs a, a, a double, needs a pair of, uh, let's say, piping a system because uh, you need uh, the pipes to collect the grey water and uh, the other system to, um, of pipes to um, lead the treated water for uh, the various use, uh, either uh, in the flushing or uh, in the outdoor watering. So it is a, a complex system using various tanks, filters, uh, disinfectants, um, uh, pumps, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. Um, and again, we have uh, created a 3D model of this uh, grey water system that uh, uh, it seems more uh, fun and amusing uh, for the groups. Uh, they try again to assemble the model of the grey water system uh, using pictures. Um, and we stress of the uses of the reclaimed grey water, either in the toilet flask, in watering the urban green, in watering tree plantations and uh, what are the restrictions in, in using it, of course, uh, and uh, it's a potential uh, towards water saving and sustainable water management. Again, here you can see some pictures uh, from the waterworks of the wider program. These are the grey water uh, system installed in uh, environmental education center uh, in Cyprus, if I remember well, yes. And these are some of the grey water systems installed in Malta, one in a football stadium and another one in uh, the uh, College of Science and Technology. Okay, I see the time flies already, so I will not go into details. These are my last slides. Uh, you will uh, have uh, um, the presentation uh, in any case. So we have also developed a, a set of experiments, of water experiments that uh, are uh, complementary to the, uh, the previous hands-on activities I shared with you. Uh, as well as uh, a set of uh, activities about uh, the traditional uh, cisterns or even water monuments uh, that we have been developed and uh, uh, mostly applied in uh, Greece. Um, and the activity again on the water cycle uh, and the urban water cycle, where we discuss with the group not only uh, the processes of the uh, of the water of the hydrological cycle, but also the human intervention on on it. So apart from evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, and so on and so forth. We talk about uh, the exploitation of groundwater. We talk about the runoff of, from agriculture, deforestation, urbanization, uh, overconsumption, and how they impact uh, the hydrological cycle processes. Uh, this la last slide is again uh, from the UNESCO curriculum on the SDG 6 on water. Uh, some more ideas on uh, activities uh, dealing with uh, water and in order to adopt a new water culture and attitude. And um, if I'm not wrong, I think uh, uh, 
this is the last slide. Uh, this is, a, I don't know if you can see, it, it is a picture a drawing from an eight-year-old student uh, wishing uh, to establish a rainwater harvesting system in his house. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, we are more than happy to, to reply. Vicky, Sorry, the I only think uh, you may uh, at a given moment uh, show a little bit or uh, discuss a little bit is also the Hydria program because of the um, rainwater harvesting uh, works, the traditional one that are also monuments today. And uh, uh, this is also a very useful uh, educational material for, uh, for uh, teachers to use in their classrooms. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we do have shared it uh, in the last uh, webinar, Hydria. It is included also in our slides, but I can also share the link again uh, in the chat with the group. Um, you're very welcome to visit Hydria. However, I need to say that uh, at that given moment, um, it is in, in a reconstruction phase. So um, I will share again the link on the chat. Uh, it is an online, um, let's say, a museum uh, gathering some 36 cases uh, of uh, water monuments around the Mediterranean region. Many of them uh, are about uh, rainwater harvesting and uh, old cisterns. Let me share it the outside. So, you know, if we do not have any other question, I, I think, think Asna has raised her hand. Our best student. Uh, you Hello, can also uh, share the video me. of Hydria. Not now, but just, uh, yes, whoever wants to use it, it is useful. We will share the links, both links, Professor. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hasna? Oui, oui merci. Donc, Thank you. No, it is not really a question. It is a proposal, I would say. Now, as I was uh, uh, looking at uh, your uh, uh, presentations, uh, something quite important came to my mind. Uh, we uh, are uh, all dealing with uh, these uh, systems uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, in including them in our pedagogical work. So we are called to review the regulatory framework um, for the uh, governing the building of schools. For instance, a school cannot be built if there is no such system for the collection that is of rainwater. A school cannot be licensed if it does not have a system for the reuse of uh, uh, wastewater uh, and so on and so forth. So the idea would be to um, actually see how we could make sure that because we're working with the schools, how we can advocate, how we can lobby in order for the um, existing legislation on uh, the operation of schools is changed and includes these elements, uh, in, you know, this uh, uh, criteria of environmental respect. Thank you. Thank you, Hasna. This is a an idea that actually, for, for example, in Greece, it is implemented in certain areas for all buildings, not only for um, from for schools in the Cyclades, the islands of uh, Central Aegean Sea, where there is a tremendous water scarcity and after a lot of pressure, 
Now in the new buildings, it is obligatory to establish at least a rainwater harvesting uh, system, which is the traditional. It used to be some decades ago in any case in the buildings. Uh, but it's, uh, yes, it's something worth thinking of in countries like Germany. We see, for example, uh, that there are gray water uh, 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 treatment systems and rainwater collection systems available in a country that has water, it has the resource. So I think this is a necessity for our countries, for our region who lack the resource. So this is something worth thinking how to advocate in order for this to become a part of our regulation. Uh, so I think we are right on time for a change and uh, we are about to have our break. Uh, but I would like to invite, unless we have any other question or comment, I would like to invite uh, Magda to show the waste video and explain to us a little bit about the um, uh, break, break on Water is life. The existence of everything on this planet, including our own existence, depends on water. Our food security, our health, our energy, our prosperity, and our ecosystems are all water dependent. Earth is a water world. More than two thirds of its surface is covered by water. Most is saline water in the oceans. The fresh water is only 3.5%. But much of it is deep in the ground, unavailable to humans, or trapped in glaciers and ice caps. Less than 1% of Earth's water is fresh and in liquid form. That's all we've got. A unique and valuable resource that we cannot produce, that is finite, and becoming increasingly rare. Population growth, economic development rates and urbanization have increased global water demand by six times in the last century and it has continued to grow by roughly 1% a year since the 1980s. Pollution is decreasing the available water of good quality. Climate change is disrupting the water cycle and makes the management of this resource much more difficult, particularly during the more frequent extreme events. Water scarcity already affects every continent, with several countries of the southern Mediterranean and the Middle East suffering or using irreplaceable water trapped deep underground, just as minerals. Efficient use of water at all levels is now more than ever crucial for preserving this vital resource. Water demand management is one of the approaches used to save water by influencing consumer or user behavior to reduce the amounts used. Water use is increasing both globally and in the southern Mediterranean. It includes water we use for drinking and cooking, cleaning and washing, but also what we call non-revenue water. It is water that is lost in the network before it can reach you because of technical deficiencies, or because it is used without authorization, proper metering, or payment. So, here are some simple things you can do to save water and money. First, fix leaks in your home and report any leaks you notice in your neighborhood. Reduce shower time by just four minutes and save 32 to 80 liters of water. Turn off water when brushing your teeth or shaving and save six liters per minute. Use two button flushes or put a container in your toilet tank and reduce water used per flush by over two liters. 
Only run the washing machine when you have a full load. One less machine washing a week can save around 60 litres of water. Use a dishwasher instead of hand washing and save another 60 litres. Use buckets for washing cars instead of a hose and save as much as 300 litres. Do not plant lawns. Plant local varieties that do not need watering and are more adapted to arid conditions and save hundreds of litres of water per day. While you do this, the EU-funded WEST project supports central and local authorities, water utilities and other relevant actors to develop policies, methods and tools to manage water more efficiently and tackle issues such as non-revenue water. Combining our efforts helps to protect water and preserve life. So, help save a drop. Pass the message on to the young and old. Make a small change that makes a big difference. This video is under preparation. It's not final yet. That's why you don't see subtitles. It will be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, subtitled in Arabic and French. Um, so that's it for, for the first uh, session from us. Maybe we can go for the five minute break. And if you want to Magda, you can explain to us. May I remind you only of the three topics of the three working groups. So the first one uh, will have to do with uh, concept maps and diagrams and how um, we use these methods uh, behind uh, the, the design of uh, activities such as the ones that Vicky showed you in the first session. In the second working group, we um, talk about what makes a, a building, an institution, water efficient and uh, how we can get there in terms of education and beyond. And in the, in the third group, uh, we talk about uh, how women and the youth play a role in water management and education. I remind you that there will be no um, interpretation in the three groups. So the first two will be in English and the third one uh, will be in uh, French. So Magda, if you want to explain to us how thank people you. can choose. Yes, thank you. I will now open. And then the we have a five minute break. Yes, uh, I will open the rooms now. You're free to uh, select the room that you want to and the group that you want to attend. If you have any troubles, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can find me on the chat. I have renamed myself with an, uh, and I named me Magda Support. So feel free, I'm here. Now I'm opening the rooms. So you should have a pop-up message that tells you where to go, in which group you want to go. I see that we have, yes, I see that you have already started selecting the, the working groups, which is great. Each group starts with the language that the working group is running. So the two first ones are in English and the third one is in French. So please be aware when you select the group. I, we can, uh, we're more than happy to go into a quick break. I will leave the rooms, the rooms as they are. <clears throat> and um, right before we start, if we can just announce that uh, I will assign people uh, randomly, maybe, if they don't choose their group. Gadir, normally, uh, if we can have just the translation, uh, the interpretation, sorry, in French, um, 
that there normally you should be able to select your your group if you have any issue please let me know which one do you want and i will assign you there sana if you want i can assign you to a group if you cannot find the pop up message you can just type on the chat uh the number of the the number of the group that you want to go Gadir, i see you want to be on the third group and i will assign you there you must be there already Tessa, you are on number two no, 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 no. If I can just please ask you to mute yourself. Thank you. For he, okay, great. Let me add you on number one. You must be there, Mohammed number two. I can do that while you are on a break, if that helps, so that you grab a, some water or something. I will keep my camera on if it helps you. Feel, and I'll mute myself. Feel free to reach out via chat and I will uh, select the groups that you mentioned. Thank you. I think I have uh, done most of the requests. If you haven't been assigned, feel free to send me your preferred group on the chat.
Huh? Oh, no. Oh, it's Euh, bonjour, oui, où est-ce qu'on peut trouver le bout? Oui, Madame Asna, s'il oui. vous plaît, le, le bouton, c'est tout en bas à droite, c'est le bouton euh, euh, More. Peut-être c'est plus. Hasna, vous pouvez aussi me dire le numéro du groupe que vous voulez. Oui, s'il vous plaît, j'ai choisi le groupe numéro 3. Ok, parfait. J'aimerais bien ça. rejoindre le groupe numéro 3. Ok, parfait, merci. Je vais faire ça ah, maintenant. Non. C'est fait. Oui, exactement. Monsieur Safik Ibtissam, est-ce que C'est fait de l'al. Sorry, group one is assigned de l'al.
again for all of you you are kindly requested to indicate us in which group you would like to go as the five minutes have passed so you can either let us know uh, by using your microphone or right in the chat uh, nous vous prions de nous indiquer <coughs> à quel groupe vous voulez aller lequel vous voulez auquel vous voulez participer donc, nous vous prions soit de nous indiquer ça en utilisant votre micro, soit nous écrire sur le chat. Dalal, I see you came back from group number one. We haven't started the breakout rooms yet. So if you don't see anything on your group, it is completely normal. Να δω τι να κάνουμε, λες, να τους βάλουμε όπου να είναι. Ναι, θέλω να δω λίγο. Δεν έχουμε ξεκινήσει τα group, σωστά. Δεν έχει ξεκινήσει. Το πρώτο βλέπω τη μιλάνε. Αυτό έκανα τώρα, έκανα βλακή, γιατί πήγα να μπω και μετά για να βγω. Μα πάτησα λάθος, κουμπί και έκανα λίφτε λίγο στο μύτι. Α, ε, για το δεν πρώτο, okay. Ναι, Βίκη, είδα ότι τέτοιο, ότι μίλαγε, είχε ξεκινήσει και μίλαγε, τώρα δεν ξέρω αν... Ωραία. Ε, πρέπει να μπω τότε στο τρίτο για να ε. το βίντεο. Ε, να τους... ε. Άφησέ τους, θα μείνω εγώ εδώ και θα συνεχίσω να λέω Ωραία, ότι αυτό. σας παρακαλούμε. Παίνω και έρχομαι, δεν θα πάρει πολύ ώρα. Εντάξει. Έλα, γεια. Δες εκοανιματέρες, δες εκοανιματέρες, ρεσπονσάμελ δε κλουμπ, βέρ, κοι σαν δέζα ινστορή ή μιζόν πλάς παρ' το δεπαρτομέν δε λεμβερολμέν δε λεσέκολ. Et le troisième axe le plus important, c'est la sensibilisation. La sensibilisation avec tous ces aspects et toutes ces natures, surtout qui rentre dans le cadre d'une caravane verte qui est toujours organisé par le département de l'environnement, dans les colonies de vacances, dans des événements et dans des manifestations nationales et internationales. Et en plus, on a une sensibilisation très spécifique ici dans le département. C'est un espace éducatif qui est dédié surtout à l'ancrage et à la consolidation de l'éducation à l'environnement et développement durable au profit des élèves et des étudiants des établissements scolaires et même des associations, des acteurs associatifs dans le cadre des ONG. Et merci. Merci. Alors, euh, comme j'ai Magda, euh, euh, je vois que Magda est, euh, est présente. Est-ce que ça vous dérange si on, fait, euh, on continue le tour de table euh, un peu plus tard Parce que là, j'aimerais vous montrer euh, la petite vidéo dont je vais vous parler. D'accord. Euh, donc, je vais demander à, 
à Magda de, de me permettre de, de vous montrer cette vidéo. Oui. Et après, dès que la vidéo sera terminée, Magda, would you be so kind and then, yeah. uh, Oui, oui, c'est uh, parfait, je vais faire ça maintenant. Oui, et après, uh, me permettre de, de nouveau de partager mon écran. Okay, oui, c'est parfait. Mm -hmm. Ok, merci beaucoup Magda. À tout de suite. À tout de suite. Mais les femmes et les filles sont également une force puissante en matière d'action climatique. Innovatrice dans le domaine de l'énergie verte, en tant que la terre, notre seul refuge, inestimable, mais pas invulnérable. Arrivons-nous trop tard pour la sauver. Le changement climatique rend notre monde plus dangereux, plus fragile, plus inégal. En ces temps incertains, les femmes et les filles subissent la menace tout à fait disproportionnée de déplacement, de pauvreté et de violence. Mais les femmes et les filles sont également une force puissante en matière d'action climatique. En tant qu'innovatrice dans le domaine de l'énergie verte, en tant que défenseuse de l'environnement et en tant qu'enseignante au bénéfice de notre génération et de celle à venir, l'égalité des sexes n'est pas seulement une question relative aux femmes, c'est la voie vers notre survie. Il n'est donc pas trop tard pour investir dans l'action climatique par les femmes et pour elles. Pas trop tard. Pour autonomiser les femmes entrepreneurs et décideuses dans leur foyer. Pas trop tard pour donner la parole et du pouvoir à cette prochaine génération de championnes de la terre. Pas trop tard pour exiger des engagements en faveur d'un avenir égal et durable pour toutes et tous. Faire avancer l'action climatique par et pour les femmes et les filles est la clé pour sauver notre planète. Joignez-vous à la lutte pour l'égalité des sexes aujourd'hui, afin qu'ensemble, nous puissions créer un avenir durable. Ce n'est pas trop tard. Merci Magda. Je vous en prie. Donc, euh, je peux repartager mon, mon écran, hein, c'est ça Oui, oui, exactement. Okay, merci. Donc, euh, voilà une toute petite euh, une vidéo très, très courte qui a été créée par euh, ONU Femmes euh, sur l'égalité euh, des, des genres euh, euh, pour un avenir durable. Euh, vous avez bien pu le voir, oui, toutes Oui, ça marche, mon Dieu, c'est parfait. Vous l'avez vu Oui, ok, c'est bien. Ok, donc euh, Hasna avait fait, euh, elle nous avait donc parlé d'elle, ce qui était euh, très bien, merci. Euh, Peut-être euh, Linda pourrait... You can go down on the button for the breakout rooms and choose you the one you would like to join. I'm reminding you that there is no interpretation in the rooms, so the two first are in English and the third one in French. Daxi, hola kala. Ne, mia kala, mira, sami ki valam ki to video. Eh, na valo. Ne. Lipon. Mhm. Uh, so I'm not sure if everyone is back from the. They are coming now. They we just closed the rooms now. So okay, everybody's back. Is coming back now. 
So we're 44, no great losses. I would like to invite uh, for a five minute um, summarize, summary of what happened in the, the group sessions. So we can start uh, group by group. Vicky, will you will do it or there is a rapporteur from your group? From the first Not actually group. a rapporteur. Uh, it was uh, Nureddin. Um, I hope he's joining yeah. us. I'm joining, yes. yeah. I'm here. Yeah, if you want to speak about our uh, our section, you want me to speak about our section, yeah? Yeah, we're speaking in our, uh, we're discussing in our section, uh, in our section, sorry, about the, uh, the reusing of water for, or the awareness for the gender and the youth and uh, for female, also, we're speaking about the three diagram. We three about we speaking about uh, the the spider way and the linear and the, the system map way and the difference between the three ways and what is the uh, advantage and disadvantage or what is the difference between the three ways between the spider and linear and the system map. Also, there is uh, uh, many ways how to how to, to, to collect the water for the day or to, to use the website in cridio.net and we can use it. That's a, all I, I can speak about it. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Nuradin. So this was from the first group, but uh, worked on uh, concept maps, uh, how we use them in education. In our second group, we uh, talked about the elements of a water efficient institution and what needs to be there, what can be improved and how. Do we have any volunteer from uh, group number two? I can say that it was a rather, rather a silent group. We were 13, but uh, a lot of people did not take the floor. I don't know why this happened. They had closed cameras and they did not respond. However, there were few um, active and talkative in our group. So anyone from group number two? I, I will uh, take the floor, okay. Uh, we talked, uh, hi for everybody. Uh, we talked about uh, how to make the institution uh, efficient in water. Uh, we talked uh, on, on many uh, problems, solving many problems. Uh, one, uh, solving uh, leakages, uh, using uh, conserving water by, uh, by uh, using uh, 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 t uh, technical, uh, smart technical uh, uh, pipes to conserve water, uh, use uh, recycling, reuse, <clears throat> etc. cetera, uh, water harvesting. Uh, all these uh, will manage to uh, solve a uh, 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 scarcity of water. Uh, also at the end, we suggested that uh, when uh, we are talking about uh, sustainability, uh, of uh, uh, water uh, management, how to reach uh, SDG goal six, water and sanitation. We should put strategies, make implementations, monitoring and ev evaluation of these strategies to be successful at the end, to be successful, to succeed in uh, reaching sustainability. A very important uh, thing, uh, to uh, solve the gap between the demand and the supply also. I put it in the chat, in the chat but we didn't discuss it, discuss it. This is a very important uh, thing. And uh, uh, as we said, use uh, non-conventional uh, water resources like water harvesting, uh, reuse, uh, et cetera, uh, gray water, uh, desalination to uh, Use it uh, to uh, use it as a, a non-conventional source of water because we have scarcity in water. Uh, what that's what uh, we discussed. 
Yes, so thank you, Fuhei. So the ideas discussed in this group were a combination of what can be done at the personal level, having to do with yeah. education and the message communicated to our family and yeah. colleagues and so on. Uh, what can take place at the building level, yeah. having to do with the infrastructure, fixing the leakages, uh, setting up the meters, um, putting, uh, installing uh, tanks, uh, improving the irrigation and so on. And at the last level, we talk uh, also about uh, what can be done at the level of the municipality or, or the government. So looking at the wider picture, talking about um, uh, water management strategies. Uh, with this, uh, we'll invite the rapporteur from the third group. Um, so hello, Iro. I have, uh, first of all, I would like to say that we had an extremely rich uh, discussion in our group. We, uh, we were only eight, um, eight people, um, but uh, very, very uh, nice discussion, very rich, uh, a lot of inputs uh, by uh, at least half uh, of uh, the person that uh, participant, par participated. Uh, I have a question now. I mean, um, you know, ladies are, mostly ladies were in my group. Uh, usually they're a little bit shyer, so uh, I will do the reporting back. Uh, is it okay if I report back in French because um, the discussion took place in French? Yes? Okay. Donc, um, comme j'ai eu le feu vert pour faire, uh, pour rapporter uh, notre, nos discussions... Uh, so, in order to report uh, our discussions, I have the pleasure to share with the plenary the main things that we discussed in our meeting. We had the time to discuss two topics. One is the optimizing of the use of water and uh, reducing, uh, wasting water in households. On this topic, the main uh, points were the following. Women are in a very good po position to reduce uh, wasting water. They know the uh, techniques of saving water. Some examples were mentioned. For instance, not leave the tap running, using recipients, uh, bowls, etc., while preparing uh, either to wash the dishes or washing uh, vegetables, washing uh, clothing in uh, bowls, etc. In this way, water is saved and it is used in a rational manner. Another idea that was mentioned was saving water from uh, the toilet flashing uh, system by placing bottles there or other systems. The lady who talked about this, Ms. Sana, explained that this is part of the measures of awareness raising uh, towards women and children in the context of various activities of um, the NGOs. Also, there is the uh, agricultural level, the rural level, where women are the ones who collect water. Therefore, they are aware of the value of water and are very attentive, very cautious in not wasting it. A different case is the one of uh, households which are more fortunate, which have uh, swimming pools, etc., where water is used uh, more freely, but there they can use the water of the swimming pool to um, water the garden. We also heard about uh, collecting rainwater for um, storing it and having uh, stock. Um, in tanks, in cases where there is not enough water. Another thing that was mentioned also was that women are at risk 
quite often in rural areas because they have to travel very long distances to uh, transport uh, water for household uses. They are the ones who remain um, alone in their farms and which are exposed to violence on behalf of men. As regards urban context, there are now more and more women who are working and uh, men participate more in household chores. They also adopt uh, different behaviors, more rational behaviors compared to uh, the past as regards uh, water use in order not to have very high uh, bills for water. And the last technique that is uh, advised is not to take uh, baths, but to take showers in order to save water uh, within households. The second theme that we talked about, the second topic, was capacity building or reinforcing the capacities of women and young people. What are the proposals? And who is responsible for the transmission of knowledge uh, in this uh, respect? And from the answers, it seems that it's the families, especially the women, who are the first source of knowledge as regards water management in the family. It is women who teach to their environment that the uh, water used in uh, washing uh, can be reused. Uh, it is women who uh, teach children as to how to use the water uh, from uh, toilets, etc. The family is the first source of uh, learning with women. The second level is uh, schools and training within work in the context of social responsibility. The proposal that was uh, heard was the creation of um, green housing with the reusing of water in urban um, in the urban context. Another concern that is very important for uh, rural areas is the management of agricultural water. Since climate is changing, there is there are uh, products, for instance, uh, watermelons, etc., that are uh, very much water consuming. So we need to improve the culture, uh, the cultivation of these uh, vegetables and fruits. A last point that was mentioned, very important, is how we are, we could improve the transmission of knowledge as regards uh, water management among young people. We could use multimedia games that young people appreciate a lot. So this is uh, more or less all. I think I could say more, but the time is pressing. So I will uh, stop at this point. And if I omitted something, if I've forgotten something, the participants are most welcome to take the floor and add it uh, now. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. And uh, that's all from the three groups. Uh, Professor Skoulos did not join any. So if you have any final reflections. Or... No, I actually, uh, what uh, observing uh, what it was uh, mentioned by your report, um, I see the, the uh, one of the difficulties here. The difficulty is um, how to 
transmit the messages in an educational, uh, in a sound educational, um, through a sound educational methodology. Um, we have many messages, all uh, important. The issue is when and how we can uh, transmit these, mes these messages in an effective way. And um, uh, this now with what uh, Angela said about the family, uh, we understand that um, a first set of uh, educators are families indeed. So uh, when we, we all, all those who work with education, public awareness, formal, non-formal, and informal education by the by transmitting, by informing the wide public, we also train in this way the average, I mean the wide public and women in particular there, we facilitate their role in teaching the children they, in preschool uh, age, which is the most important period of learning. Uh, everybody says so now that the most important period for shaping behaviors is exactly the first years of our life. So um, it is very important to see how uh, this uh, very dynamic relationship is enhanced through all what we are saying and all what we are doing. So schools through children educate also families. So it is a very complex uh, social uh, process and we need to keep that in mind. In this process, we need to bring in new knowledge, accurate knowledge, and understandable knowledge, understandable for everybody. This helps in changing from the cognitive, from the knowledge part to the behavior and attitude. So all what we are doing is uh, in a continuum. So this is important to for all of us to understand that uh, what we are saying is uh, actually related, correlated, and feedback in a, in, in a circular process. This is what I wanted to say. And uh, it is, we, we all know about uh, uh, methodological difficulties or uh, uh, areas with gaps. But uh, our effort is uh, filling these gaps automatically uh, by repeating and repeating things. S many of these gaps are actually closed. I don't know how we did it this time, but we are right on time. One minute before the session, uh, the workshop uh, ends according to our program. I would like to thank uh, Professor Skoulos and uh, everyone uh, of the participants in these uh, two workshops, actually. Like the previous time, we are going to upload all the PPTs, uh, plus the extra uh, background PPT that uh, Professor Skoulos mentioned. I see a hand raised by Hasna. Yes, Hasna. Oui, merci. Donc, yes. Thank you. Uh, there is a recommendation uh, coming from my colleagues. Uh, they would like to have a translation in Arabic. Uh, as you know, the um, 
countries uh, and the southern shores of the Mediterranean uh, are Arab speaking countries. And as Miss Angela said, uh, there was a rather shy uh, participation. And this is probably due to the uh, language problem or language difficulties. Uh, unfortunately, um, French or mastery of French is not always there. So we do hope that this recommendation will be taken on board for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, we, we do take this into account. And thank you for the nice rose we have there. Sana, you want to take the floor? Please do. Sana, vous pouvez prendre la parole. Oui. Merci. Je parlerai en français parce que mon anglais est très modeste. Thank you very much. I'll speak in French because my English is poor. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, organizing all these webinars, quite interesting, and we learned a lot. And there is a recommendation, however, I would like to make myself. Uh, and it has to do with uh, a good practice and know-how in communities, whether we're talking about uh, women in rural uh, environments uh, or uh, uh, elsewhere. Yes, there are some very, very good practices, the best practices in terms of water management. And we did work uh, on topics such as climate change. Uh, uh, we did see that uh, water water component uh, is uh, very close to um, climate uh, uh, change, and uh, I do believe that we were able to work together very well and bring about some results, regardless of uh, uh, the language in which we expressed ourselves. And yes, uh, we were able to also hear what uh, children had to say in relation to what their parents were they're hearing from their parents or the people in their area. Thank you. Thank you, Hasna. Uh, thank you, Sana. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. And I, I, I just want to remind you that uh, uh, apart from these, uh, these workshops, uh, there is always the MEDIS uh, network where you are uh, very you are encouraged to join the medis and uh, and uh, iro you should uh, give the all the details and uh, what uh, sana mentioned uh, if you have good examples that you wish to share with a large number of uh, educators uh, you are most welcome because uh, uh, MEDIS is a network of more than 6,000 educators of the region. And uh, this allows all of you to share good experiences through uh, the MEDIS network. So um, please use this uh, opportunity, this facility, and enrich it with your uh, examples. I think Sana, uh, Hasna, sorry, wanted to take once more the floor. If I don't know if we have time and if she still wants to take the floor. Please. Uh, this rose that you can see in uh, uh, behind me is a rose that I dedicate to all the women of the world. And in particular, the ones that, that are living in areas of conflict. Thank you. We can hear you. <laughs> Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everyone. Uh, also, uh, an evaluation questionnaire will be communicated to you. Photo the group. Yes, and uh, let's uh, join for a photo group. If you care to open your cameras, we can all say bye bye to each other.
Δεν φαίνονται όλα μαζί. Στα σπέρδι. Γεια. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Evaluation to still it. And we will send it. We will send it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Good luck. Bye bye. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget to say goodbye as well. Happy Women's Day for all of you, you. and uh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sukan.